Uh, Draymond, I don't know how long it's been since you guys had a relatively easy one. Did that kind of feel different and good to to be able to whether you blew, you know, whether it's classic blow it or not, to be able to actually blow out a team? Yeah, no, we needed it. Um, like you said, it's been a while since we had a blowout win. So, you know, it's good to get this one. Uh, especially first game with Steph out. You know, it's good to, you know, start off on this foot and, and try to create some momentum. Jeremiah, what did you think of Jordan's facilitating? And I thought that's the best game I've ever seen him play. Um, played a great – he ended with four turnovers. Three of them was this, him understanding what was going on in the game and trying to get clay shots um, at the end of the game. So to realistically have one turnover and, what, 13 assists or something like that? I thought he played an incredible game on both sides of the ball. Uh, he was good defensively. Uh, their whole offense is running guards in the guard guard screens and waiting on a slip up and then driving that gap. And he was incredible um, on that side of the ball. And he was incredible, uh, obviously, offensively. He let the game come to him. He got everybody involved. And then he looked for a shot. And everything was beautiful. I thought that was an incredible game, one of the best games, if not the best game I've ever seen him play. Clay obviously had, you know, the huge night, but what have you just overall thought of, you know, his last month, his last month and a half or so? Oh, it's coming together for him. Um, you know, he's become more and more patient with the game and, you know, he goes 12 for 16 from three, but, you know, just really allowing the game to come to him, um, you know, and he's looking real bouncy and spry and, you know, he's looking good over this last month, it's starting to come together, which that a good time for us. Dre, we, we know obviously Jordan did a great job running the game, but you look to be really kind of vocal and active. Is the, what does it happen for you as a leader when Steph is out and you got to kind of play quarterback again? Uh, it's just much greater responsibility um, when Steph's out. You kind of got to – well, I have to, um, you know, pretty much just try to keep, keep a pulse of the entire game, you know, whereas with Steph – uh, you don't have to be so on. If that makes sense. Like you, you can just kind of let the game take its path. And at times, you may need to settle the game down. But for the most part, you can just kind of let the game take take its path and play off step. You know, teams are so afraid of him that they'll just make mistakes, worried about him, and then you just kind of play off that. When he's not out there, um, you have to get everybody into more sets. Make sure we stay, um, you know, calm and and organized you know it's Steve always call it organized chaos when Steph's out there um but you, you don't have that when he's not out there you know and so have to make sure we stay organized and and get to the things that we want to get to you it's hard to have uh th those laws that we can have sometimes when Steph is here because he can just bail you out you know and you know, when he's not, it's it's much tougher to do that. So just really trying to stay up on the game and make sure we don't have any laws and 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 understand the importance of each and every possession because you're trying to make up 50 points uh, between what he creates with his scoring, maybe 60 points. Uh, the mistakes, you know, the baskets that you get off mistakes people make when he's out there, and then obviously his passing. So uh, you can't – no one guy is going to make that up. And so you have to do it collectively. And for me, it's understanding that, um, you know, got to make sure everyone understands the importance of each possession. You mentioned Jordan having understanding of what was going on in the game at the end, make sure you're trying to get to Clay. But he was doing that even before the end. What does that tell you is going on in his mind that he's feeling it? He's a scorer. Right? He likes having the ball, but he's looking to get it to Clay. Well, that's his next level of growth. You know, um, he has the ball a lot for this team. And his next level of growth is understanding when you have the ball that much, uh, the responsibility to get others involved. And he was there from the jump. Um, <clears throat> you know, I just, when I say, uh, you know, it wasn't that he wasn't getting them involved the entire game, but at the end, he was just trying to force feed them, you know, trying to everywhere he went, he was just trying to find them and get them the ball. And we've all been there, you know, with Clay having one of them nights, we're all just trying to find them and get them the ball. And it causes some turnovers. And that's kind of what happened there at the end. But, um, you know, when he was just allowing the game to come to him and, and playing a great floor game, which he did all night, he didn't turn the ball over. He made great passes. He made extra passes. Um, you know, and it was it was a beautiful game to watch him play.
What did you think of that play late in the second quarter where Clay kind of waved off Jordan and then dribbled to the corner and then shot that three over two defenders and kind of slapped was, his hand like it was a high percentage? It was play. an awful play. <laughs> it was an awful. But I knew if, if you notice, I started running back as soon as he started going deeper to the corner. I knew what was coming. Um, you know, but we made up for it defensively. But it was an awful play. Very expected, though. Very <laughs> expected. You, you mentioned the importance or making sure everyone understands the importance of every possession. And I think that's kind of been an issue this season with just not being able to string together a good decision and take care of the ball and stuff like that. Is this time without Steph maybe help some of the, some of the team like better understand the importance of those well, possessions? You have to, you know, so um, you either understand that now and play that way or, or we'll lose. And so, uh, you know, we want to make sure we kind of lead this team in a better position than than we were in when Steph went out. I mean, that's the goal, you know. And so understanding the importance of every possession is going to be key uh, during this stretch. Because like I said, when, when Steph's out there, he can he can cover, he can make up for mistakes uh, just with his scoring, with his shooting, with his presence on the floor. He covers some mistakes that you would make. He's not there to cover those mistakes now. And so you have to do it as a collective. And I think we did a good job of that tonight, and we have to keep doing that. You said something a second ago. You said that um, when Clay is having one of those nights, one of those games, you've seen a lot of those games. What is it like when Clay gets on a heater like that? Uh, I mean, you know, for me, it's one of two things. Either go screen for him or look for him on the pass. Uh, but I understand the things that can open up when he's having that type of game. If you saw, his, you know, later as the game went on in that second half, he started hitting the pocket. He started hitting slips, you know, because that's the attention that he draws when he's having a game like that. Uh, you know, but ultimately understanding that if you just get him um, the ball in the spaces where he likes to shoot, when he got it going like that, it's not much else you need to do. Uh, like I said, for me, sometimes it's either as a screener or a passer. Great.